Today we're going to talk about principal leadership, and uh, I am delighted that we got a number of, uh, I think, very potentially very helpful speakers to talk with us. And we're going to get right into it, and I'm going to start. Uh, Ms. Fry, you want to come up front and speak from here, if you will. Betty Fry is a leadership consultant with the Southern Regional Education Board, and she's been working, as I understand it, in the area that involve principal leadership for a good while. I'll let her tell you about that. But anyway, we're going to hear from her this morning on that topic. Good morning. I'll jump right in. I'm very pleased to be here with you today and have the opportunity to talk about our efforts at, at SREB that have been focusing on leadership for about the last 14 years. Um, I'm, I'm aware of the time, too, because my um, fellow seatmate back there tells me he needs to leave by 10.15, so I will be uh, very, very quick in my remarks. Carol is going to have this set up to go. Thank you, Carol. I'm actually pinch-hitting today for Dr. Jean Bottoms, who is the Senior Vice President at SREB. Our efforts began back in 2008 when we received a um, grant from the U.S. Department of Education to develop a principal preparation program in Florida. And we, since that time, we have had a major initiative based on our early work uh, with the, the state of Florida out of their right, uh, race to the top monies to uh, the, uh, redevelop that program and deliver it to a cohort based around five districts in Florida. I brought you two handouts. One of them looks like this. It says getting it right. And it has uh, more detailed information about some of the things that I'm going to cover very quickly this morning so that we can look into it further. The other thing I brought, I'm not sure that the committee um, has seen or used this latest report out of the University Council for Educational um, administration. I took out of it the, the pages for North Carolina. They did an assessment across the 50 states uh, where each state stood on a number of indicators and I thought you'd be interested to have a look at the North Carolina piece only. It's a big thick book you would guess 50 pages there covering uh, not more than 50 pages about 200 pages covering every state so that's there for you. Um, use as background information as, you, as the committee does its work. Um, I'm sure I don't have to convince this group that principals do make a difference in the school. They do matter. As you can see from this diagram, uh, they about 25% of the impact on student achievement is attributable to the work of the principal. The things that the principal does um, to have that impact are pretty clear. Uh, if you look at the, the diagram on the screen, of course they have to provide good management for the organization, take care of the budget, take care of the facilities, the hiring of teachers, and the evaluation of teachers. They also have to be instructional leaders. They have to work with teachers to support them in improving their classroom practices. They have to build a strong professional community in the school, a culture of collaboration particularly. They have to have healthy relationships with the families um, in the community, have to have a safe, provide for a safe learning environment, um, and they have to make sure that they communicate well across the board from the community to the parents, to the student, to the school board members, etc. So those are important things that the principals have to do. The two programs that we have developed uh, for use in Florida both center on preparing leaders who are able to turn around low-performing schools. There is a difference between turning a school around and transforming a school. The two definitions that you see on the screen at this point point out the difference between those two terms. A turnaround is a relatively quick um, piece of work in which the, the student achievement is improved within about two years by taking certain actions that I'll emphasize as I go along today. The transformation is a longer term 
endeavor where every aspect of the school is changed so that it becomes focused on student achievement and the things that have to be done to support student achievement. So of course I'm going to speak mainly about the turnaround side of the equation this morning. Just like the phrase turnaround having a different meaning, the turnaround preparation of a principal is different also. You can look at this definition that was given to that process by Mass Insight, um, where it indicates that just like in other businesses, uh, turning them around is a different aspect than transforming them or leaving them. The preparation of principles for turnaround is different also. Uh, our goal there is to ensure those people come out of the program ready to hit the ground running in a low performing school and immediately put into place those things that will make a dramatic improvement in the classroom and in the instruction that students receive across the school. I'm going to focus primarily on House Bill 97 because I know that's a, a large piece of legislation in North Carolina and the way of doing that is to con compare and contrast what the SREB model looks like alongside of the North Carolina features that are in House Bill 97. And you can see on the screen the first provision there is for a proactive, aggressive, intentional recruitment process. Um, in our program, in our SREB model that we implemented in Florida, the legislation required the districts to do the selection of what we did do to ensure that that was an aggressive and proactive process was to provide the district's uh, set of criteria drawn from research and to provide them guidelines by which they would select their participants. They did, did a very good job of it. They selected 120 uh, participants, 82 of whom completed the program and 70% of whom they have since that time placed in leadership positions either in schools within their districts or in district level positions within the five districts that we work with. So that is how we handle uh, recruitment and selection in the Florida model that we uh, provided two times for them. We would have done a little differently had we had the, the authority to do the selection. Um, as, I, as I said, um, high quality standards, we did align our program to several sets of standards. First of all, we aligned them to the aligned it to the Florida standards, principal leadership standards. We aligned it to the UVA tenants um, for turnaround leadership. We aligned it to the competencies identified in the public impact research and to SREB's extensive knowledge base on school turnaround and uh, school improvement. The next, next part of the House Bill 97 speaks about rigorous coursework, linking that coursework to theory and practice through um, very well-developed field experiences and problem-based learning. Here's what we did in our program. We did provide rigorous coursework through a university, University of North Florida, that has a nationally accredited, state-approved, educational masters to educational leadership master's degree for those participants who needed a master's degree they needed certification <coughs> initial certification they did enroll in the university program however most of our participants already had an educational leadership master's degree or certification we were dealing mainly with aspiring principals and who had already been through the traditional university program. So we were able to spend most of our time and effort on developing a training program that went beyond the basic um, traditional kind of educational leadership preparation at the university level. Well, we did concentrate on problem-based learning, all experiences um, took place in low performing schools because that's the place where our participants were expected to be practicing after they graduated. They had, uh, you called for, in your legislation, you called for a five months um, 
internship or clinical practice, as you call it, in an orphanage setting with substantial leadership um, responsibilities that, and, and measuring the impacts on student achievement. We provided a year-long of practicum plus a half-year full-time paid internship in our program. Um, that program, part of the internship, uh, engaged them in 23 separate leadership responsibilities that were related to the 10 skill sets that we developed for our program. They were all evaluated based on rubrics especially developed for those assignments. They had a major research um, project in which they had to implement a segment of the 90-day school improvement plan um, at that school. It was actually a year-long plan, but since they were interning for a half year, they implemented their initiative for a half year, which was the 90 days. Um, they had skill-based evaluations at several points along the internship, and they had an end of internship um, evaluation by a panel. You called for multiple opportunities to be observed and coached by faculty. We had both mentor principals and internship coaches. The mentor principals stayed with them throughout the program. They were exemplary principals who were selected by uh, the five districts that we worked with. Um, they, we, they also had, in addition to the mentor principal and the <coughs> internship coach, they had a case study principal because they did their practicum, their year-long practicum was completed in a low-performing school, which was not the school that they were uh, currently uh, working in. So they actually had two placements, one in a case study school, one in the internship school. So that case study principal provided them some guidance in addition to having uh, a permanent uh, mentor and a coach who stepped in during the internship. Both the mentors and the coaches had training on their roles and responsibilities in um, the program, in the turnaround program, because we felt like um, coaching a principal who was going into a better performing school would be much different from coaching a principal who was going into a low performing school. So they were especially trained for that role. You called for clear expectations and commitment from school leaders overseeing the clinical practices. Um, I've talked about the training already that we provided to those mentors and coaches to make sure they were well familiar with the role that they were to play, the work they were to do with those principals. Your bill calls for evaluation during and, and at the end of clinical practice and to be based on your near North Carolina rubric. I'm assuming that's the rubric by which principals are evaluated in the school districts. Florida does not have a consistent rubric for principal evaluation. So we based ours on the 10 skill sets that the um, interns were to demonstrate during their half year internship. Um, and those 23 assignments that they completed throughout the program. We did have a tracking system where we kept track electronically of every assignment and every event that the um, interns uh, attended. They were graded on all assignments and that was put into the database. They received reports on their performance uh, every quarter of the program so that they could monitor themselves and make adjustments in their practices as needed. The districts were provided a copy of their um, tracking record so that if they needed to step in and do some extra work with these people that they had selected as promising young leaders, they were ready and able to do that. They had the data by which they could do a good job of, of pinpointing the areas of need and, and provide them some extra assistance. They had an end of program evaluation. They presented their portfolio to a district panel of um, high level administrators within the districts plus some practicing principals within their districts. 
they talked about their 90-day improvement plan and the achievement results um, that they um, achieved through implementation of that plan so that that panel made the final judgment as to whether or not the um, person completing the program was actually <coughs> ready to step into a low-performing school and do a good job of turning it um, around. The district assigned them a rating. They either got a rating of ready, completely ready, nearly ready, or not ready. And that was the basis by which the district would uh, place them into a leadership um, position after completing the program. Your bill calls for continuous program review and an, an improvement process that's based on partnering with local administrative units and using data from the program computers to conduct that evaluation. We had a design team that worked throughout the delivery of the program to do refinement and modifications as needed based on feedback from both the participants and the districts. The, the um, design team met monthly. Every month we sat at the table together. The group was not as large as your committee, but we had about eight people on this design team. <coughs> we had appointed district contacts who were appointed by their district superintendent. Uh, we met via uh, virtual meetings with them once a month. We met with our coaches once a month via virtual meetings. We provided snapshot documents to the district contacts and to the coaches and mentors that kept them abreast of all of the events that were taking place in the program, alerted them to what was coming next and what the expectations were for things that they should uh, be doing. We did annual surveys of the participants and of the district staffs as to the quality of the program and the progress in the implementation of the program. The participants evaluated every seminar. They attended 10 seminars, and they participated in five online modules, and they evaluated each one of those, and we crunched the data and reported that back to the Florida Department of Education and to the districts for uh, their review and for our use and modifications that we would make to the program um, after this um, second cohort went through the program. You called for established relationships and a feedback loop with the affiliated school administrative units. I have um, just described how we provided feedback on performance of participants, feedback on the progress of implementation to those district contacts. They were the conduit up to the superintendent. So there was always that two-way flow of communication between the project staff and the district um, staff and the State Department of Education. Uh, that was the funder of our work. So that kind of gives you a bird's eye view. Um, we, when we opened the program up, we found it was very important to conduct a, a, a statewide orientation to the districts that would be in the program. We call them all together for a one-day meeting where we very thoroughly went over the uh, details about um, the program and its design. And then we made site visits into those districts to be sure that we had provided all of the information that they needed for a good startup and to provide them assistance in the beginning startup. I did the crosswalk, a more detailed crosswalk. If you flipped open the handout that I gave you, you would see there a more detailed um, crosswalk between House Bill um, 97 and the Florida Big Turnaround Leadership Preparation Program. One of the other things that is in the handout is an overview, a written overview of that program for future reference. On page nine, there is a list of the 10 skill sets that we derive from the literature as being important to um, turnaround leaders' preparation. 
um, that's on, the starts on page nine. We provided also in the handout what we call our comprehensive curriculum map. Uh, it shows all of the seminar topics and the sub skills that were addressed under each um, topic for the seminar, the assignments related to the seminars that they were required to do because we always gave them a seminar follow-up assignment that was assessed by a particular um, rubric designed for that purpose and we always gave them an assessment on that skill set. So you've got all of that information outlined there in that part of the handout. And finally, on the last few pages of the handout, along about page 22, where it starts, where it starts, we have a summary of all of their assignments, all of the modules, and some of the selected program requirements that they completed, along with the lessons that we learned uh, about um, those particular parts of the program. I know you'll have a chance to hear from presenters later on the panel. Um, I know that um, my colleague over there is waiting in the wings, and time is short, so I will um, yield the podium to the next one.